Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Echo Live, coming to you from the Michigan Science Center. My name is Anna, and we've got another really fun science program planned for all of you watching from home um, or through your online classroom today. Today, we're going to be running through a program which I like to call Microwave It. Um, so thank you everyone so much for joining us here again on the Michigan Science Center's Facebook page. Um, if you're joining us through Zoom, hello everybody. It's nice to see so many familiar faces joining us every weekday um, on here and on Facebook as well. Um, so we're calling this lesson Microwave It. So basically today, we're going to be putting all the stuff in the microwave that we've been told our whole lives we should never do. Um, I know that when I was a kid, I was really, really curious about why we can't put certain materials or certain objects in the microwave. Um, so this is one of those definitely do not try at home um, science experiments. So we'll be showing you what happens so that you have no need to try this at home. Um, just like our vacuum chamber, if you are still curious about certain things that you've been told you shouldn't put in the microwave, um, send those suggestions to us. Um, if you haven't done so already, introduce yourself in the chat feature. That chat feature is the best way to communicate with me throughout the program. Um, so if I ask you a question, you can type your answer right there in the chat. Um, you can use the emojis to tell me yes or no to certain questions. Um, and you can also ask your own questions in the chat as well. Um, so if you haven't done so already, introduce yourself. Um, I've seen a few familiar faces and some new friends joining already. So welcome. Um, and we're going to get started. So um, you can see that over off to the side here, right in front of me, um, I've set up some of those objects that we've been told we should not put in the microwave. Uh, so start thinking about these objects, you know, think about the things that we have on the table here. Um, think about have you ever been told um, that you should or should not put any of these objects in your microwave at home. Um, and let's start thinking about what might happen to these different objects. Um, but if we're going to make an educated guess, about what's going to happen to these objects inside the microwave once we um, start putting them to the test, right? We should probably um, understand a little bit about how microwaves work. Um, now, technically, the name for this device or this piece of equipment right here is a microwave oven, which describes what it does. Um, an oven, you might have an oven at home, um, is used to heat up food. Um, so this is an oven, but it's not a conventional oven like the ones um, that we would use to bake a cake. Um, this is a microwave oven, meaning that instead of using um, conduction, where we heat the air inside a regular oven, which then heats the object inside it, a microwave oven actually uses microwaves in order to heat up the object itself without heating up the air first. Um, but you might be thinking, well, what exactly is a microwave then? So um, it's not this device. Um, this is named that because it uses microwaves to heat up food. But we need to understand what exactly is a microwave. And to put it very simply, a microwave is just a type of light wave. Um, so if we take a look at our electromagnetic spectrum, um, big long words here, the electromagnetic spectrum um, classifies all of our different wavelengths of light. Um, so if we normally think about light, we're most familiar with visible light, light that we can actually see. Um, so this yellow part of the spectrum right here, just underneath this little light bulb, that is visible light. And it's actually only a very small part of the um, electromagnetic spectrum. So we can see only certain wavelengths of light. When we're talking about wavelengths, we mean exactly what it says. We mean the length of one wave. The way we measure it is from the top of one peak to the top of the next peak. Um, so here's a peak here. And here's a peak here, and the wavelength would be the distance between those two points. Now we have different wavelengths of light, so you'll notice that wavelengths over here are much longer, um, whereas wavelengths over here in the green side of the spectrum are much shorter. The distance is much smaller in between. Our eyes are only actually able to see light waves that are between 400 to 700 nanometers. Nanometers are extremely small. Um, we might be familiar with centimeters, and we know that there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So if you can think of a meter stick, which is about three feet long, give or take, um, in one meter stick, there are 100 centimeters. But if we're talking about nanometers, one, there are one billion nanometers inside a meter stick. Um, so that is a one with nine zeros after it, one billion nanometers to every meter. We can see visible light, which is between 400 to 700 nanometers. 
anything that falls outside that wavelength, anything smaller or larger, our eyes are not able to detect. Um, the receptors on our eyes are only designed to absorb certain wavelengths of light. Um, you might be familiar with UV light. Um, so UV or ultraviolet light is noted right here on our spectrum. Those wavelengths are a bit smaller than visible light, so humans are not able to see them. Um, but other living organisms can. So things like certain insects can actually see UV light, um, but they might lose out on different parts of our visible light spectrum that we see in humans. Um, so UV light is smaller, um, and then even smaller than UV light, we have X-rays and gamma rays. Um, so tiny, tiny, tiny wavelengths there. Um, if we're talking about microwaves, um, we can see it right here. These wavelengths are much longer than visible light. Um, this one's actually a lot more practical to visualize because microwaves have a wavelength um, somewhere between 30 centimeters. So if you picture a ruler, right, you can actually measure 30 centimeters pretty easily. So anywhere between 30 centimeters and one millimeter, which you can also see on a ruler if you look at the centimeter side. Um, they're the tiny, tiny little notches that are even smaller than centimeters. Um, and so that's where we find microwaves on the electromagnetic spectrum. But you might be thinking, well, what does this have to do with heating up our food? Now, the electromagnetic spectrum is named this because every type of wave that falls on the electromagnetic spectrum um, has both an electric and a magnetic field um, that they produce. Um, and I can actually show you that using a pretty interesting animation that I found on YouTube. I'm going to switch my share to this um, video here. Um, and I got this from a guy on YouTube. His name is Engineering Guy. Um, and he actually made this animation, um, which I find very, very helpful to understand how a microwave oven works. Now, most often we're using a microwave to heat up food. Um, and most food contains at least a little bit of water inside it. Um, so here we have a drawing or a picture of a water molecule. And if you think back, um, to our lesson on polarity or hydrophobic and hydrophilic substances, we said that water molecules are directional. They have both a positive and a negative end. Um, so the hydrogen side of the atom we say is positive because hydrogen atoms are positively charged um, and oxygen atoms are negatively charged. So this side of the water molecule is negatively charged. We say that because of that, this molecule is polar or it experiences a dipole moment. Um, so it has directions just like a magnet would have a north and south pole. Water molecules have a positive and negative end. But we also mentioned how this relates to an electromagnetic field. So the yellow lines on this field are the electric field and the pink lines are the magnetic field. And we can see that they're constantly switching back and forth. They're constantly um, moving. This, um, a microwave specifically moves back and forth about 2.45 million times every single second. Now, if you can think about a water molecule behaving like a magnet and it's moving through a mat or a wave that has a magnetic field is moving through it as well, right? That has an interesting effect on these water molecules. As these water molecules are exposed to the electromagnetic field, the magnetic field actually rotates them back and forth and back and forth, um, which causes some kinetic energy. So we've talked about kinetic energy a few times as well. We know that kinetic energy is that energy of motion, which we are clearly seeing um, with our water molecule here that's moving back and forth. We can observe evidence of kinetic energy in the form of heat. Uh, we can see it other ways. So if these molecules were um, in uh, touching something, right, we might hear sound as evidence of that kinetic energy or that motion, but a microwave really produces a lot of heat. Um, so it's making kinetic energy, which we observe as heat as it heats up our food. Um, so microwaves work on any sort of charged substance, anything like this water molecule that is either charged or has polarity. So we've got some objects down here on the table, um, and we're going to be putting hopefully most, if not all, of these items in our microwave here today. Um, so if you have something you particularly want to see, um, tell us in the chat. Um, the first one that we'll do is, ooh, let me pick. This is such a hard choice because they all have such cool properties. 
Um, so I think one of the most common things we're told not to put in the microwave is metal. So we'll start with something um, metal. Um, so we'll start with this wadded up piece of aluminum foil. Now, um, you might know that you're warned about putting things like this in the microwave, right? Because there is a chance of fire. So I do have a fire extinguisher um, on the side of the uh, microwave that has the door on it. That way it's easily accessible because that's where I'm going to be putting things in and out of the microwave here. Um, so think about the things you want us to try in the microwave. We're gonna turn our camera down here into the microwave. Now, this is not a microwave that we use for food. So I should preface with that. Um, we said that you should never ever try any of these experiments at home because it could very badly damage your microwave, which you use for food. This is not for food. This was donated to the Science Center. You might notice that it's really, really old and really, really big. Um, and so we're not as worried about this microwave. So um, if we break it, it will be okay, but that's not the plan. The plan is not to break it. Um, we're making sure we're being safe, um, that we've got our fire extinguisher handy, and we're showing you guys what's gonna happen to these objects so that you don't need to try any of this at home. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll open up our microwave and we'll just add in our piece of aluminum foil. Um, aluminum is a metal that we find on the periodic table. So we'll just go ahead and set that down inside and we'll start up our microwave. Now, who guessed that was gonna happen? If you guessed that our aluminum foil was going to spark, um, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Um, if you thought something else was gonna happen, tell us what you thought might happen in the chat. Um, so we're going to um, turn it back on for just a moment here because I'd like us to observe something else as well. Um, so we saw light. Um, so we saw some light as this aluminum foil sparked um, as those, as the charge was built up between the atoms of aluminum. Um, but I want us to observe something else. I want us to know exactly how hot this stuff might get. So to do that, um, I have one of these right here. Um, this is an infrared. So we saw infrared light actually on our electromagnetic spectrum. And you can actually point this um, thermometer. It's got a laser pointer on it. You can see in there. Um, so if you point it at something, it'll then give us a reading of just about how hot that is. So um, the outside of our microwave is about 74 degrees, um, approximately room temperature, maybe a little bit warmer. Um, but we're going to turn our microwave back on and let's see how hot this aluminum foil gets in just a few seconds. All right, so we saw some sparks of light there. Let's use our infrared thermometer and we can see that this aluminum foil, went at a good spot, got up to about 92 degrees in just a couple seconds. Um, so it's pretty warm. Um, it's definitely, that's one of the reasons, right, that microwaves are great for cooking food is it only takes a small amount of those microwaves um, or of that energy in order to convert that into heat. Um, and so we'll put on a pair of gloves here to remove our aluminum foil. And then we'll try our next object. So let me take a look at the chat. Let's see if you guys picked anything particular. Let's see, in the chat. Oh, I see some great suggestions of maybe some things that I don't have here in my studio, but um, just like our vacuum chamber, um, I'd love to do another segment on the microwave about something that you think we should put in here that I maybe don't necessarily have. I see a couple of people saying that they thought the aluminum foil might melt. Um, maybe if it got hot enough or if we let it, left it in there long enough. See, someone suggested the grapes. Uh, the grapes are, pretty, are a pretty interesting one. Um, so I've tried the grapes a couple ways today. Um, and so let's go ahead and grab some of those. Pull them over here. Um, and we're gonna take the grapes and we'll put them inside the microwave. I'll prop them up on this piece of wood um, now we talked about wood during our electricity segment that we know wood is not um, charged. It's a pretty good insulator. And so nothing should happen to the wood here inside the microwave. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll add a couple grapes inside the microwave. So if you have a guess about what you think might happen to these grapes once we turn on the microwave, um, tell me in the chat, what do you think is gonna happen to the grapes inside the microwave? Go ahead and close our door here. We'll reset our time. 
All right, let's see. No guesses just yet. Well, let's go ahead, tell me what you think is gonna happen and we'll turn on the microwave in three, two, one. Now, maybe not as exciting to look at, but we have to think about what grapes are made of to understand what might happen here. Um, so grapes are full of water. And we said water is one of those substances that is extremely affected by microbes. Um, so right now, the grapes should be um, warming up. We'll get a read on them um, with our infrared thermometer once we turn off the microwave here. Um, so the grapes are getting warmer. I see someone guessed that they're going to move. Ooh, so we did say that the molecules inside them are um, moving, right? And so maybe that's enough energy to move the grapes around. Someone told me that they think they might explode. Someone says they might smoke. Um, great guesses. Now, the theory behind grapes goes is that in addition to water, um, there's also um, electrolytes inside these grapes um, or salt, things that our bodies need, which is what makes grapes pretty healthy for us. Um, so the idea is that since there are electrolytes inside these grapes that are actually able to conduct electricity, that we should be able to create plasma by warming or by putting these grapes in the microwave. Um, so far, I've not had much luck on getting that to work. Um, so this is, again, not something you should try at home, but something we can look into on YouTube. Maybe there are some um, other factors in place, but um, let's get a reading in terms of heat on these grapes, even though I've let them cool down just a little bit. Um, but in that, I think they're in there for about 55 seconds. We've heated up those grapes to 162 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so those grapes were definitely boiling inside. You can see that there's some liquid that's leaked out of them. Um, and so those grapes are extremely, extremely hot. Um, so they did pop. We can see that they leaked out some liquid underneath them, um, but we didn't quite get any plasma. So we'll have to keep working on that one. Um, just like in any science experiment, if it doesn't work the first time, um, we can always change some variables and try this one again later on on Echo Live. All right, so let's see. Oh, someone made, someone told me that they turned into raisins. They kind of did since they've lost a bit of their moisture since we boiled it out. Um, I think if we left them in there long enough, we might actually turn them into raisins. All right, now I've got a couple other fun objects here. Um, I know that one of the most common things that people are told not to put in the microwave is their silverware. So I've got a whole container of silverware here. Um, and the myth goes, if you're familiar with this myth, um, it's that in order for silverware to be a problem in the microwave, it has to have somewhere for charge to build up. So the myth goes that while you can't put a fork in the microwave, you can put a spoon. Um, so let's try just the spoon first. We'll try putting just the spoon in our microwave here. Make sure we can see it. And let's watch what happens to our spoon inside the microwave. So we'll reset our time here. And here we go. All right, so the microwave is on, right? And we know that spoons are made out of metal and metal um, is in fact one of those polar um, substances or those atoms inside are charged. Um, but you'll notice that our, our spoon's been in there for about almost 20 seconds already. And we've not really seen much going on. We definitely don't see the same sparks that we saw with the aluminum foil. Um, nothing is boiling since this has no water inside of it. I see a couple of great guesses. Some people are telling me that it might spark, but really we're not seeing a whole lot going on. Um, so we're not seeing a lot happening to the fork inside the microwave. Um, and some people will theorize that because the charge that's being built up on the spoon is able to be distributed so evenly around the shape of the spoon, um, that's part of the reason that the spoons don't spark in the microwave. Um, but let's go ahead. So we've left it in there for a full minute now um, and nothing has really happened. Now, again, that doesn't mean nothing's happened just because nothing visible happened, but let's get a reading um, on the temperature of this spoon. Make sure we're pointing just at the spoon, not at the plastic. Um, and the spoon is pretty hot. So about 103, let me see if I can get it to focus here. 103 degrees Fahrenheit. So very, 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 very hot, um, even though it didn't spark or anything like that. So um, let's try the other side of that um, hypothesis, right? Let's try the fork next. So um, the myth goes that since there is these gaps in between the tines of the fork, 
right? That actually allows for more charge to um, be built up between them or a difference in charge to be built between them, um, which then should give us um, some sparks. So let's go ahead and try that out. All right, here we go. So we'll give the fork about the same amount of time as we gave our spoon. I think it helps if I actually put my glove here. So we're at about 15 seconds and still not really much going on inside the microwave. How interesting, right? All right, so we're about halfway through our minute. Um, so we're at about 30 seconds and we're still not seeing much going on with the fork, uh, not even between the times at the top. We're not seeing any sort of sparks like we saw with the aluminum foil. Um, we're not seeing anything melting inside necessarily. Um, so nothing is really happening. Again, that fork is going to be very, very hot. Um, we've got about 10 seconds until we take a temperature reading on the fork. Um, someone asked, will it vibrate? And the answer is yes, but uh, really at a microscopic level. So if we could see the molecules inside this fork, uh, they are in fact vibrating. That is what's making the fork warm up. Um, that's really the science behind microwaves, right, is that they cause those molecules to vibrate back and forth um, so they actually heat the object itself instead of allowing the air inside the microwave to heat up first, which then warms up the fork later. So let's take a temperature reading on our fork. Um, we've heated up to about 122 degrees. So again, it's very, very hot, um, but it did not spark. Now I have one last idea here, um, and this is going to be kind of a combination. So we're going to put not just the fork, um, but we're going to add in the spoon and even the knife here. So we'll add all three pieces of silverware into our container. Um, again, the fork is very, very warm. So we want to make sure we're not touching it necessarily with our bare hand. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll get them in there. So there are some, we're trying to arrange them. So there are some points of contact between the pieces of metal. Um, so we're spreading them out. All right, so here we go. Another minute on the clock and let's see what happens. Oh, I saw something. Ooh, right. So now we're starting to see what we were really looking for, right? Um, so this is because each object is individually charged by the microwave. Those microwaves are passing through. They are vibrating those molecules back inside. They are charging up the molecules or the atoms inside the silverware. Um, and when they touch each other, right, there is a difference between them. So um, different thicknesses in part of our silverware um, will build up charge faster or slower. Um, and so when we have different parts of it touching, we actually do get that spark that we were looking for. Um, now, just because we didn't see these pieces of silverware um, not sparking in the microwave, um, that does not mean it's safe to put metal inside the microwave. Now, you'll notice that if you look even off to the side right here, there is a bolt inside the microwave. So metal does um, is, is used inside microwaves. There is metal already inside microwaves, um, but you have to be very, very cautious about what your metal is touching um, and how thick the metal is, and that's what makes it so dangerous. And someone said that it's like lightning. Um, you're absolutely right. So we say that as those two objects come near each other, they form an arc. Um, and so the electricity actually bounces from one to the other. Um, if it is hot enough and has enough of that kinetic energy, we say that it might ionize some of the gases in the air. Um, and so some of that could be plasma, which is the same um, state of matter that um, lightning is made out of. All right, now one of my favorite things to put inside the microwave um, is something that most people haven't really thought of before. Maybe we haven't been warned of because for what reason would you ever put the Cheetos uh, in the microwave, right? So I've never heard of a reason that you'd want to heat up your Cheetos, um, but this does do something kind of fun as well. So um, the important thing to note is that these Cheeto bags have metal inside them. So that this um, silver kind of substance inside, that is a foil, almost like our aluminum foil. Um, and then they're, to give them the design, they actually have um, plastic stretched over them. Um, so the plastic is stretched really, really thin um, so that we can print on it um, almost like paper. And then the foil inside is what protects your food um, from going bad. So we'll go ahead. And this one only takes 
just a second here. So we'll go ahead and put the Cheetos bag inside and start the microwave. And that's all it takes. So we did see those sparks right as that foil inside um, was charged and then discharged itself. Um, but now we've shrunk down our chip bag, almost like a shrinky dink. So here it is, we've got a tiny little um, Cheetos bag. So same kind of shape and same even design on it that we started with, um, just much, much smaller. Um, that's because of the material that it's made out of. We said that they stretch that plastic really, really tightly and thinly um, over the entire surface of the foil. Um, and it's kept that way by heat. So they actually stretch it and let it cool. But if you heat this plastic back up, it wants to shrink back down into its original size. And so it does that really, really quickly. Um, and since that one goes so fast, and now that this has cooled back down, um, it's actually like a tiny little shrinky dink. It's hard um, since it's made of plastic. Um, and so you can even turn these into little keychains. Um, so we'll do that one more time, um, this time with my favorite chips, Doritos. Um, so this time we see the Doritos, we can even see the design on the Doritos here. Um, let's go ahead, we'll add it inside right in the back and turn our microwave back on. Here we go. That one kind of folded on itself just a little. So we'll see if we can see the design still, um, even though it folded forward. Maybe if we open it back up here while it's still warm. Maybe not so much. So this one didn't make um, a really cute keychain like our Cheetos bag. I saw that Jennifer said that she thinks they're really cute. I agree. I think that um, uh, this is kind of a fun kind of craft that you could make using microwave science. Um, all right, so we've only got a few things left. Um, if you guys have any questions about what we've done so far um, or suggestions for what you might like us to try next time on Microwave It, go ahead and answer that or tell me that in the chat. Um, so I'll tell you which one we're going to do next. Um, we're going to put the peeps in the microwave. So um, if you've seen any of our vacuum chamber science episodes, we've done peeps um, on that. So we did use peeps and put them in our, va our vacuum chamber and watch them you know, grow. And so tell me what you think is going to happen if we put one of these marshmallow peeps inside the microwave. So um, think about that. If you have any questions, type them in the chat. Tell me, what do you think is going to happen to the peeps inside the microwave? Um, I'll keep an eye on your questions there. If you do have any or if you do have any questions, type them in the chat. I'm looking at Zoom. I'm checking on Facebook as well. So tell me, what do you think is going to happen to the peeps? I see someone even ask, can we put the peeps in there? The answer is absolutely. I don't have these peeps here for eating because I think they are disgusting. And so these peeps are not here for me to eat. They're only for science. And so I'm going to stick them in the microwave. Um, and so unfortunately, Zoe, no, you can't eat one. Um, number one, because you're probably pretty far away. Um, but number two, because these are only used for science. And so we definitely, definitely do not want to eat them. So Jamie asked, can you try this or should you not? Uh, I'm going to err on the side of caution and say that you should not try any of these experiments at home except for maybe this peep one and we'll show you why. Now if you're going to try any if you're going to try this peeps experiment at home, um, you of course need to have your parents permission. Um, and so you're using their microwave. you definitely want to make sure that you're being safe. We said that these objects inside the microwave can get very, very hot. Um, and so we always want to be safe. Um, we never want to use the microwave without permission. Um, but this one you could try at home. And so we'll give you kind of a step by step on how you might do that. I see some great guesses. Someone told me that they might grow really big, kind of like they did in our vacuum chamber. Someone said they might melt. Someone said they could shrink. Um, so if you think about our vacuum chamber, right, those peeps actually grew first and then shrunk really, really, really small. Um, someone says they might disappear. These are great. And we'll try this peeps experiment uh, next. And so I said that you could try this one at home. So if you happen to get peeps this weekend, um, you could try this one at home with parent supervision and permission. So we're going to take just one of our little peep friends here. Break off just one out of our pack. Um, so we'll do, we'll do a cute little blue guy here. We'll set those up there to the top. Uh, we're going to want to set this on something. Um, so we'll use our same piece of wood that we had used with our grapes. Um, so we said again that the wood is not 
conductive. It's not going to be affected by the microwaves. We've got our peep down there in the microwave. And here we go in three, two, one. If we can't see, we'll be able to observe a little bit better. We're getting kind of a glare. And since he's blue, he's not very easy to see. Um, but this one takes about a minute to a minute and a half in order to work. And so um, you definitely want to keep an eye on your peep while it's in the microwave. If you do try this at home, um, if you notice anything happening inside that you normally wouldn't want to happen um, inside your microwave, you want to stop it right away. Stop it immediately. Now I'm starting to notice something happening to the peep. I wish you could see it a little better. Maybe if I put my hand in frame. Wish our camera would focus here. All right, so we've been in there for about a minute and a half and let's go ahead and pull the peep out. Um, so if you see, it did grow um, and it's kind of melty too. So this does make kind of a sticky mess. Um, the most important thing, right, is that things in the microwave get very, very hot. And so if we measure the temperature of this peep, um, it is almost, it's over 200 degrees, about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's about as hot as you would make a marshmallow on the campfire, right? So we know that if we're ever going to roast marshmallows or do this, um, peeps are made out of marshmallows too, right? You need to give it some time to cool. Uh, the reason that the peep grew kind of like it did in our vacuum chamber is that um, we actually boiled the water inside. So inside every peep, um, there is a small amount of water and we actually boiled that water, turning it into a gas. And we know that gases take up much more space than liquids do. And so that gas actually expanded, turned into steam bubbles um, and grew the peep really, really big. Now you can see he's nice and stuck to this piece of wood here. So um, definitely do this over a plate, not right on the bottom of your microwave. As you can see, we've made some mistakes in the past with our microwave here. Um, so always make sure you do it on a plate. Um, and this peep will taste pretty good now that you've kind of cooked up some of those sugars inside. Even though he looks a little melty and sad, um, I promise he still tastes good as long as you wait for him to cool back down um, to a safe temperature. So yes, you can still eat it. Yes, it still tastes good. Um, again, we don't eat anything that we do here in the Echo Studio because all of this is done using science equipment, so it's not food safe anymore. Um, but if you try to do this peeps experiment at home, um, you can eat your peep once it's grow um, grown really, really big and really, really soft and squishy. All right, so we have one last demonstration um, to do, which is one of my favorites. Um, and that's actually using just a piece of ivory dish, or not dish soap, body soap. Um, so I took a bar of soap and I actually uh, just chopped it in half. Um, this only works with this specific ivory um, type of bar soap. Um, and we're just gonna stick this in the microwave um, for a little bit here. So let's go ahead and reset our microwave. Um, if you have a guess about what it might do, um, go ahead and tell me that right now. Think about what we've seen so far. We know that soap is not made out of metal necessarily, right? So think about what might be different between this um, bar soap experiment than uh, the silverware experiment or some of the other things we've tried so far. Um, I know we're just about out of time here. So tell me, I see a couple guesses on that maybe it would melt. I think that's a great guess, right? So um, soap is one of those weird substances. We use it for cleaning our bodies. Um, so great guesses, great guesses. All right. Someone, someone is concerned about the plate. Um, let's go ahead and remember we have our fire extinguisher handy, so we are prepared. Um, just in case your hypothesis is correct that the plate could be on fire. Um, and so let's go ahead and we'll turn on our microwave. Keep sending in those guesses if you have them. Here we go. Put my hand in frame. I'm hoping you'll be able to see it. It's working really well at first. Our soap's been in there for about 30 seconds, so not very long. It's starting to smell pretty nice, I'll tell you that. So one observation that I can make here in the studio that um, you maybe may not be able to observe from home is that the soap smells really nice. So it's kind of letting off a nice smell. Wish you could see it. You can see it back and forth if I zoom in and out. Um, and what do you guys notice happening? Someone noted that maybe some water is coming out of it. Someone said that it's getting foamy. 
yeah, these are great observations, right? So there is a small amount of water um, that's holding together this bar of soap. So think about what's happening to the water molecules inside the soap, just like we saw inside the peat, right? Those water molecules are starting to boil and create um, bubbles inside the soap. And so the longer we leave our soap inside, um, the more bubbles we create. Um, and we should see something pretty cool happen to our soap once we open up the door. So it's been in there for about a minute and a half. Let's give it about 30 more seconds. Um, if I maybe try to get another zoomed in view, maybe we'll be able to see it a little better. It immediately wants to focus back on the glass. All right, so we've got about 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. And I see a couple of people already told me that this soap got much bigger. Um, and look at all this steam. I don't know if you can see this, but there is a good amount of steam that's coming out of the microwave. Um, there really was uh, water inside the soap bar. And we said that as it bubbled or turned into gas, right, it expanded the soap as well. Um, so this is actually an easy way that you could create um, almost powdered soap. So uh, while you want to be careful about what you put in the microwave at home, um, there are guides online about how you can turn um, bar soap into powdered soap. But again, it only works with really specific brands. And so I wouldn't recommend um, just sticking any kind of soap inside your microwave at home. We want to make sure we're always being very, very safe. And again, that we're always asking permission before we try any of these experiments at home. Um, so that's just about all the time we have. Um, we always want to thank the sponsors of the Michigan Science Center, um, like the DTE Energy Foundation that helps us to bring these Echo Live programs to you every weekday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you did enjoy this program, make sure that you share it on your wall. Uh, make sure that you are liking and following the Michigan Science Center's Facebook page so that you know every day when Echo Live starts. Um, if you have any suggestions for what you might like to see um, in our microwave, the next time we do a microwave it demo, um, definitely please send those to us. There's a couple objects up here on the table that we didn't quite get to um, that I'd love to show you next time. Um, let's see, let's check if I have any last questions before we head out here. A couple people asked, how is this dangerous, right? Um, we saw that there was quite a bit of sparking going on inside the microwave. Um, anytime you have that kind of spark, um, you definitely have the potential for fire to occur. Um, and fire is extremely dangerous. It should never be played with. Um, it's never safe to play with fire or play with electricity um, or play with your microwave. Remember that we are trained here to do these experiments and we're doing them very, very safely. Um, so they can be dangerous. Um, just because nothing bad happened here on Echo doesn't mean that nothing bad could happen. So always be careful when you're doing experiments of your own. Um, can you do the chip bag experiment at home? Um, I would not recommend it um, only because it does kind of spark a little bit and so it could create small burns on the side of your microwave. Um, there are ways you could avoid that by trapping it inside glass, um, but I really wouldn't recommend that you try it at home just in case it maybe does any sort of damage to your devices at home because we use those for cooking. Um, again, this one is not used for cooking, um, and so we're not really worried about what might happen to this microwave um, during these experiments. I see some great suggestions. So keep sending in those suggestions. I'll keep an eye. Um, I'll write a list just like we did with the vacuum chamber um, so that we can show you even more um, microwave experiments next time on Echo Live. All right, well, thank you everyone so much for joining us here. Um, we hope to see you back here tomorrow for a very special episode of Echo Live. We'll be talking all about space um, because we actually have a very, very important Michigan Science Center milestone happening tomorrow. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, stay tuned. We hope we'll see you guys back here tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, see you then and have a great rest of your day.